Greetings, James Duffy, producer of this DVD package again. We're about to see a series of films featuring the work of Reinhold Tilling. Tilling was a German rocket scientist who, in the late 1920s, attended a lecture by another German rocketry enthusiast, Hermann Oberth, and was inspired by that lecture to begin experimenting with solid propellants and rockets. The first rocket we see here is what's called his high-altitude rocket, it was flown in 1931 and reached an altitude of roughly two kilometers. Tilling's research was funded by a, a local nobleman, uh, a gentleman by the name of the Count von Lebedur. Uh, you'll notice in the footage here, there's a young woman there with him. Uh, that is a young woman by the name of Angela Buddenbomer. And the other gentleman is his assistant, a gentleman by the name of Frederick Kur. Much of the research in rocketry in Germany in the 1930s was done under the auspices of several rocketry societies. Uh, the most famous of these was the VFR, of which Werner von Braun was a member. Uh, Tilling preferred to work in private. These films show one of the few times that he actually uh, publicly exhibited some of his work. The similarities to contemporary hobby rocketry shown in these films are quite dramatic and quite striking. You'll notice here they're using an electrical launch control system. In an earlier scene, we could see his girlfriend attaching the igniter leads, or what would have sufficed for an igniter lead on that particular rocket. Here the rocket arches over. Again, this particular rocket reached an altitude of roughly two kilometers. The German Navy showed a degree of interest in Tilling's work. They were interested in either his rockets or his propellants for use in deploying lines from ship to ship. Those lines could then be used to transfer uh, personnel or materials between ships. Here we see Tilling inserting a solid propellant motor, again strikingly similar to contemporary hobby rocket products, into an early boost glider. It's the combination of rocket power and a glider that makes Tilling's story relevant to this particular DVD package. Even at this early point, 1931, uh, researchers were clearly focused on the idea of using the combination of rockets and wings to get a job done. In this particular case, they have launched a, a package of mail on board this rocket. The concept of launching mail on board a rocket was not exclusive to the German rocket scientist. It was actually done quite frequently and, in fact, was also done in America, as we'll see in a few moments toward the later end of this film. There is even a subset of the stamp collecting community that specializes in collecting the stamps, letters, and postcards that were launched on the various rockets during this period. Do a simple Google search on any of these rocket scientists and add the name stamp, postcard, or letter to it, and you'll get a number of hits covering exactly that. From time to time, even, some of these flown items will show up on eBay or other auction sites. Tilling experimented with these glider rockets in a number of varying sizes. You'll note that the military had some degree of interest in the rockets. A couple of different places where they were flown, most famously they were flown at Berlin's Tempelhof Airport on April 15, 1931. Most of the smaller rockets that we're going to see here were flown at the, at the Tempelhof exhibition. He also flew the large rocket that we see here on Lake Dummer in Germany. Again, the similarity of the flight profile to these particular winged rockets to contemporary hobby rockets is quite striking. Today, you can go into a hobby shop just about anywhere in the world, or at least in the United States, and purchase a, a balsa and plastic glider that will follow a very similar flight profile to what Tilling was doing here in 1931. The only difference is that uh, the rocket you would buy at a hobby shop would probably perform significantly better than this, although it would be quite smaller. Here we have a number of scenes from the 1931 Tempelhof exhibition. You can clearly see the boost profile and glide profile of the rocket here. The rocket boosts with those wings retracted, reaches apogee, and then Tilling designs some type of mechanism to extend the wings into a gliding position. 
here they're inspecting the rocket after recovery. And uh, here we have Tilling doing a little bit of show and tell with the assembled press there at the site. There's quite a sad postscript to this story. Tilling was known for producing his own propellants, the primary component of which was common black powder or gunpowder. He, his girlfriend, and his assistant were working on manufacturing a motor in his workshop when a stray spark managed to ignite the gunpowder, and they were all very badly burned and succumbed to their injuries the next day. If you're interested in learning more about Tilling or any of the other early German rocket scientists, there's a book I can highly recommend entitled Retro Rockets by Peter Alway. Alway is a Michigan-based author and researcher who's made it his life's work to seek out as much information as possible about these early rocket scientists. The book also covers much of the early work of Goddard, the American Rocket Society, Werner von Braun's early pre-A4V2 work, as well as many others. Again, I can heartily recommend this book. Peter is perhaps best known for his landmark work, Rockets of the World, which covers research rockets from a period before the beginning of the 20th century up to the present day. We'll finish up with a few shots of Tilling and his crew preparing one of his large winged rockets for flight. Again, the similarity of the rocket and the ground support equipment to modern hobby rocketry equipment is quite striking. Back on the beach at Lake Dummer, clearly the editor here back in the 30s used film from a number of different sources to document all of this. In the shot of the rocket here, you'll notice a slight dihedral in the wings as it passes by and faces the camera. The next bit of bonus footage we have for you here is especially intriguing. While it is not of a German rocket, the film is from a German source and there is a German involved. This is of the Greenwood Lake Mail Rocket, which was flown at Greenwood Lake, New York on February 23, 1936. This particular rocket was another example of a winged rocket boosted vehicle. It was designed by the German rocket scientist Willy Ley, who was assisted by two local men named Kessler and Carver. It was liquid powered and fueled by a combination of liquid oxygen and alcohol. And we're going to see here in just a moment that the first flight was not entirely successful. Fortunately, there is a second rocket already on hand. Each flight of this particular rocket carried 6,149 pieces of mail. Uh, these letters are still, to this day, highly sought after by collectors. Here we have the rocket being hoisted onto the launching catapult. It's ignited again, marginally better flight, and so begins the third flight of the Greenwood Lake mail rocket. And there we have it.